Life of Sober LA15 system is an integrated, automated, extracorporeal blood processing system comprised of the Aphoresis Machine Canica MA03, which controls and monitors the LDL Aphoresis procedure, and three single-use disposables, Life of Sober LA15 LDL Adsorption Column Set, which are two columns each containing 150 milliliters of dextran sulfate cellulose adsorbent, the Solflex KP05 plasma separator, which contains polyethylene hollow fibers, and the tubing system for plasma phrases, MKM3R. Principles of operation. The patient's blood is withdrawn via venous access connected to the blood withdrawal line and enters the plasma separator. As blood flows into the top of the separator, through the hollow fibers, plasma is separated and exits from the separator side outlet while the remaining blood, the red and white blood cells, and platelets leaves the separator bottom outlet and is returned back to the patient. The plasma enters the top inlet of one of the two LDL adsorption columns. As the plasma passes through the column, the APOB containing lipoproteins, LDL, BLDL, LP little a, are selectively adsorbed in the column. The LDL depleted plasma exits the adsorption column, flows through the membrane filter, and is recombined with blood cells exiting the separator bottom outlet and returned to the patient via venous access. When the first 500 milliliters of plasma has been treated with the left column, the MA03 automatically switches the plasma flow to the right column to begin the next adsorption cycle. 140 milliliters of Ringer's lactate replacement solution pushes out the plasma in the left column and is returned to the patient. 105 milliliters of regeneration solution, 5% sodium chloride, flushes out the apolipoprotein B containing lipoproteins into the waste bag, restoring the left column's original adsorption capacity. Once solution is completed, 355 milliliters of Ringer's lactate replacement solution is pumped through the column to completely rinse out the regeneration solution and reprime the column to be ready for the next cycle of adsorption. Subsequent cycles are repeated when 600 milliliters of plasma has been treated by one of the two LTL adsorption columns until the predetermined plasma volume has been treated. Equipment. Before starting the training portion of this video, the following supplies and equipment are needed. The Aphoresis Machine Canica MA03, the Life Absorber LA15 System Operator's Manual, the Life Absorber LA15 Adsorption Column Set, Solflux KP05 Plasma Separator, Tubing Systems for Plasma Aphoresis NKM3R, a 20 milliliter syringe, a 4 to 5 liter waste bag, 1,000 units per mil of heparin sodium chloride injection vial, 3 milliliter syringe with needle, 3 bags of 1,000 milliliter 0.9% sodium chloride, 4 to 6 bags of 1,000 milliliter Ringer's lactate, 2 bags of 500 milliliter 5% sodium chloride, medication labels for heparin syringe and priming solutions, aphoresis needle for access, venipuncture site preparation materials, plastic hemostat clamps. System startup. Press the power button, hold for two seconds. Touch the Start Preparation key on the initial screen. Touch the Start key on the confirmation screen. There should be no tubing attached to the machine at this time. Confirm the alarm function by hearing the buzzer sound. This takes approximately 70 seconds. If a startup failure occurs, the results of the startup test screen will appear to identify the problem. Press the Help key to correct the problem. Touch the Confirm key according to the guidance provided on the screen as follows. Repeat the startup test. If defect or abnormality occurs again, call the Canica hotline at 
1-800-273-3521 and notify the person on call. Procedure. Select the treatment method. Ensure the treatment PA2 mode on touchscreen is lit green. Blood warmer is always used. Make sure the yes key is lit. Press the confirm key. Press confirm again. Press input to enter the patient's identification number. Press set to save. Press confirm. The procedure screen will appear. Touch install tubing highlighted in green. The valves will open. Tubing installation procedure. Blood withdrawal line installation, package number one. Install the tubing referring to the tubing diagram displayed on the LCD screen. Using a plastic hemostat clamp, secure the blood withdrawal line and hang onto the pole on the left side of the machine. Insert the infusion line from the blood withdrawal line into FD1. Load blood pump tubing into the blood pump roller. Match the red band on the tubing to the red guide of the blood pump inlet. Rotate the pump clockwise to feed the tubing into the roller. Close the blood pump door gently. Install the blood inlet chamber into the holder below the blood pump. Attach pressure line to P1 by connecting it with a slight twist in a clockwise direction. Make sure to tighten any loose connections between the tubing and the pressure filter. Ensure there are no bends or twists in the tubing. Install tubing at the bottom inlet chamber into guide next to P1. Install the blood pump outlet chamber into the level detector designated as LD1. Ensure the collar of the chamber sits flush to the level detector. Attach pressure line to P2. Fill a 20 milliliter syringe with heparin of 1,000 units per mil concentration. Install the syringe into the infusion pump with graduation marks facing upward and syringe, plunger, and collars properly seated. Note, the machine is only calibrated for a 20 milliliter syringe. Tubing installation procedure, blood return line installation package number two. Attach the blood warmer bag to the plate heater. Arrow on top of the bag should be pointing to the right. The blue banded inlet part of the tubing on the lower right side of the bag should match the position of the blue dot on the heater plate. Note: Place the tube in the tube holders correctly to prevent kink and blockage. Squeeze the door handle to close the plate heater door securely. Be careful not to pinch or bend the bag and tubes. Pull gently to confirm door is properly closed. Remember to always squeeze the door handle when opening and closing. Attach the blood return chamber coming from the output side of the blood warmer bag located at the top of the heater to LD4. Attach pressure line to P7. Install tubing into air detector designated as AD B12. Connect end of return line, just a blue capped patient return line, to the waste bag. Attach 
attach plasma outlet chamber into the chamber holder below P6. Connect pressure line to P6. The T-connect is located below the plasma output chamber. Set the right side of the line into V11 valve. The blue clamp should be on the right side of V11. This clamp should remain open during rinse and prime. Be sure to floss tubing through all the valves to ensure tubing is moving freely. Tubing Installation Procedure Plasma Line Installation Package Number 3 Find the extra piece of tubing which is the plasma pressure line and attach this line to P3. Insert tubing into valves V3 through V6 by pressing down on the white valve cover while inserting tubing from above ensuring the word up faces the operator. Floss the tubing. Attach plasma inlet chamber with the yellow marking to LD2. Load the plasma pump tubing into plasma pump roller. Match the yellow band on the tubing to the yellow inlet guide of the plasma pump. Rotate the pump clockwise. Close plasma pump door gently. Attach pressure line to P4. Install the line from the inlet side of the plasma pump to the blood leak detector designated as BLD. Try not to touch a tubing that goes directly into the blood leak detector. Install regeneration inlet chamber with blue markings to LD3. Load regeneration pump tubing into the replacement pump roller. Match blue band on the tubing to the blue inlet guide of the replacement pump. Rotate pump clockwise. Close the replacement pump door gently. Attach pressure line to P5. Place brown banded tubing to the guide on the right side of the machine toward the regeneration line. Tubing installation procedure. Regeneration line installation package number four. Insert tubing into valves V7 through V10, ensuring the word up faces the operator. Floss the tubing. Install the waistline starting from the bottom of the conductivity detector. The conductivity detector is designated as CD on the right side of the machine. Install tubing coming from the top of the conductivity detector into the guide located on the right side. Connect waistline to the waist bag. All clamps should be open. Install tubing into the tube holder under the machine. Attach the regeneration line, which is the second tubing in the package, with brown and blue bands, to the right side of the machine. Install chamber with brown bands into the drip detector, designated as DD, and tubing into fluid detector, designated as FD3. Install the line with the blue bands into FD2. Thread lower tubing through V1 and V2. Follow the diagram on the side of the machine. Insert tubing into guide next to the conductivity detector. Tubing Installation Procedure Interconnect Tubings 
Connect the brown banded lines located on the right side of the machine by removing the blue cap and locking it securely. Connect the line from V11 to the blue banded regeneration tubing by removing both caps and locking them together. Place the tubing into the tube holder under the machine on the right side. Tubing Installation Procedure Plasma Filter Installation Package Number 6 Connect the end of the plasma filter tubing with the yellow band to the plasma outlet tubing between V7 and V8. Connect the opposite end of the plasma filter tubing to the line coming off the top of the chamber below P6. Tubing Installation Procedure Final Checks of Tubing Installation Ensure all seven tubing connections are tight. All seven pressure filters are connected securely to the pressure ports. All the tubings are inserted correctly into the 11 valves. And check that all four pumps, the blood pump, plasma pump, replacement pump, and infusion pump are all installed correctly. After this final check, Press continue to close all the valves. The screen will turn blue and the attached disposable device window will open. Attach column and separator screen will appear. Note, you must see this blue screen before you attach the separator and columns. Separator and column installation. Plasma separator Sulflex KP05. Install the plasma separator into the separator holder with the label in the upright position. Place the separator in the middle of the holder to prevent spam test error alarms during the rinsing process. Steps must be completed in this order to prevent the fluid in the separator from flowing out toward the blood outlet. With a slight twist and clockwise turn, connect the red connector of the blood withdrawal line to the inlet, which is at the top of the separator, making sure the red connector sits flush within the port. Connect the line from P3 to the plasma pressure port, which is the upper side port of the separator, making sure it is fitted deep onto the port. This is done best by toggling the rubber connector side to side while pushing in. Connect the line leading to the plasma pump to the plasma outlet port, which is the lower side port of the separator, making sure this too is fitted deep onto the port. Connect the blue connector of the blood return line to the outlet which is at the bottom of the separator till it sits flush to the port. Please ensure tubing is not twisted while doing this. Separator and column installation. Life absorber LA15 LDL adsorption columns. Install the columns top side up into the column holders. Connect the line between V3 and V5 to the inlet port at the top of the left column, being careful that there are no twists in the tubings while doing so. Connect the line between V4 and V6 to the inlet port at the top of the right column. Remove the output cap located at the bottom of the column and connect the line between V7 and V9 to the outlet port at the bottom of the left column. Connect the line between V8 and V10 
to the outlet port at the bottom of the right column. Preparation of rinsing. Touch the continue key on the attached disposable screen. Procedure screen will appear. Touch the rinsing priming key on the procedure screen. Preparation of rinsing screen will appear. Close the red clamps on the blood withdrawal and infusion lines. Verify that the blue clamps on the return line and on the line right of the V11 are open. Fluid connections for rinsing and priming. To prepare, place plastic hemostat clamps in the middle of each connection tubing. Next, hang two 1,000 milliliter 0.9% sodium chloride bags on the left side of the machine. Using a metal hemostat, remove the stoppers from the injection port from the two 1,000 milliliter 0.9% sodium chloride bags. With one of the connection tubings, interconnect two 1,000 milliliter bags of 0.9% sodium chloride. After connecting, don't forget to remove the plastic hemostat clamp. Connect FD1 to one of the interconnected bags of 0.9% sodium chloride. Fill drip chamber half full. Connect blue banded line from FD2 to the other 0.9% sodium chloride. Fill drip chamber half full. Connect brown banded line from FD3 to the 5% sodium chloride. If your institution supplies 500 milliliter bags of 5% sodium chloride, interconnect two of the 5% sodium chloride bags before spiking it with the line from FD3. Fill the drip chamber half full. Touch the start key. To purge air from the blood withdrawal line, open the blood withdrawal and infusion line red clamps. Back flush the blood withdrawal line with 0.9% sodium chloride. Reclamp blood withdrawal line only and hang back on the IV hook. Touch continue. The rinsing process starts automatically. The rinsing process takes 12 minutes. When the rinse mode is complete, the buzzer will sound. Improper tubing installation. In case a tube is not properly installed in the valve, reinstall tubing could be selected during the rinsing process. Once the rinse process begins, press the blood pump button on the operational page. Process is suspended screen will appear. You can select Reinstall tubing. The reinstall tubing screen appears. Touch any desired valve marking on the LCD screen to open the corresponding valve. Install the tubing line in the valve properly. Then press the blood pump button to resume the rinsing process. Preparation of priming. Hang one 1,000 milliliter bag of lactated ringers with 3,000 units heparin on the left side of the machine. Place a medication label on the solution bag. For 
the metal hemostat clamp, remove the stopper from the injection port of the lactated ringer solution bag. Temporarily place plastic hemostat clamps to the blue banded FD1, FD2 lines to prevent fluid em empty FD1, FD2 alarms. Don't forget to remove the plastic hemostat clamps once you have spiked FD1 and FD2 lines to the priming solution. Touch the start key. Priming takes approximately five minutes. Priming complete screen will appear when priming is completed. Flush the blood withdrawal line with the heparinized lactated ringer solution. Reclamp blood withdrawal line and hang on IV hook. Close the blue pinch clamp on the return line and waist back. Disconnect the return line from the waste bag. Clamp with a plastic hemostat and hang on the left side of the machine. Close the blue pinch clamp to the right side of the 11. Close the roller clamp and red pinch clamp of the infusion line. Press continue. Procedure screen will appear. Note, if more than one prime is desired, press the continue key and the repriming key will appear in yellow. Press the repriming key to start repriming. Heparin need only be added to the final priming solution. Prepare for treatment. Calculate the plasma volume to be treated. This may be performed any time prior to entering the operational settings. Refer to Chapter 1 of the Operator's Manual for calculating plasma volume. Press the Treatment Return key on the Procedure screen. Interconnect 3 to 4 1,000 milliliter bags of lactated ringers and hang on the right side of the machine. Connect FD2 to the replacement fluid lactated ringer. Hang one 1,000 milliliter bag of 0.9% sodium chloride on the left side of the machine. Connect the FD1 line to the normal saline. Set the blood flow rate of the blood pump by turning the red knob. Set the plasma replacement ratio by turning the yellow knob, never to exceed 30%. Always adjust the plasma pump as a percentage of the blood flow rate. The replacement pump rate will be identical to the plasma flow rate there is no adjustment knob for the replacement pump. Touch the change data key on the LCD screen. Setting menu screen will appear. Press parameter for treatment highlighted in blue. Press tan area volume target. Enter plasma volume to be treated. Press set to save. 
blood warmer temp range is 35 degrees Celsius to 39 degrees Celsius and will remain constant for each treatment. Should the temperature be changed, press the tan area of the blood warmer temp and enter the desired temperature settings. Press set to save. Press tan area of the IP infusion rate. Enter the heparin infusion rate. Press set to save. Press close until the treatment screen appears. Obtain patient access. Connect withdrawal, arterial, and return venous lines to proper access lines. Secure lines and ensure all clamps to patient access lines are open. You are now ready to begin treatment. Press the start key for two seconds. Return process. When the treated plasma volume reaches the preset volume target, the musical sound and the volume target complete screen appears on the LCD. In case any further continuation of the treatment is desired, increase the volume target by changing the data and touch the continue treatment key to resume. To rinse back, touch the Prepare Return key. Preparation of return screen will appear on the LCD. This will stop the blood pump. Place a clamp to the right side of the connection between the infusion line and the blood withdrawal line. Open the red clamp of the infusion line. The roller clamp of the infusion line should be open. This will passively return the blood in the withdrawal line. Once the line is clear of blood, move the hemostat clamp to the left of the connection between the infusion and withdrawal line. Press start for two seconds. The machine will now begin the rinse back process to return the blood and plasma to the patient. When the return volume reaches the preset value, the blood pump stops automatically. The return complete screen will appear on the LCD. Note. In case an additional blood return process is desired, touch the re-return key on the procedure screen. Set a re-return volume for blood side only through the changing data key, then touch the start key to resume. Once the rinse back process is completed, clamp the return line. Aseptically remove both accesses. Disconnection of tubing. Touch the detached tubing key on the procedure screen for two seconds. Confirmation window appears. Touch the yes key on the window for two seconds. Touch the open valve key on the treatment is finished screen. Remove the tubings, pressure protective filters, and other disposables. Once all the disposables are removed, touch confirm key on the treatment is finished screen. This will close the valves. The initial screen will appear on the LCD. Press the power off button. 